Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Joe Tarnowski here with ECRM, and I have with me Emily Page, who's a packaging design expert and the CEO of Pearl Resourcing. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about best practices for suppliers that are using Zoom to present their products to buyers during our efficient supplier introductions. So and the reason why I have Emily here is because she uses Zoom a ton in her day-to-day -day business. So thank you for joining us, Emily. And I guess to start off, can you give us a little background on your experience in using Zoom to, uh, to pitch clients? Yes, absolutely. So I do consulting for small businesses and medium-sized businesses and large businesses that sell physical products. And whenever we do a consultation, we usually have to share screens. And so I'll be speaking to them using the video function, but also sharing packaging artwork. And it is so funny, the types of problems that can come up when you're doing online video presentations, things that you don't really think about when you're doing in-person meetings because you're in someone else's office. But in this type of a digital environment, it's so much more obvious when something is wrong and people will be staring at it, distracted by it, so I have some really funny experiences where I've learned the hard way all these tips that we should talk about so that people can be successful in these sales shows. These sales awesome. Shows. Perfect. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess let's start with the basics, right? Uh, just making sure all of your uh, tech is in order. You know, let's start with that, uh, you know, tech, the room setup, uh, the basics like that before we get into actually, you know, using the tools. Yes. Okay. So a million things will go wrong and we're going to talk through them, I guess, as a checklist. And that way everyone should be doing this at home before, before the day of your presentation, you need to do a real live test with zoom at home on your computer, which means you should literally call someone that you know and have them give you some feedback, wearing the clothes you're going to wear using the same computer. Um, cause you're going to really get some great insight if you're able to do that and practice it once before. So the first piece that you need to check is your Wi-Fi speed, because if you are doing a video presentation and you only have a short amount of time, you don't want the screen coming in and out. You don't want the audio to be going um, in and out. And so zoom actually makes some recommendations. So you can Google what the zoom speed requirements are. And you can also do go to uh, speedtest.net, which is a website. It's free. And you can click a button and it will test your Wi-Fi download speed so you can make sure that if you're at a location in your home that it's going to be fast enough. And if it's not fast enough, see if you can go to a friend's house or someplace else to make sure that you're going to not have choppy Wi-Fi because that would ruin a presentation. Uh, you also want to check your audio and video. So most people at this point have at least a, an iPhone or a computer that has a video camera and a microphone already set up if it's a very modern computer. But if you don't, you might need to buy a microphone or a video camera adapter to be able to add to your computer. The good news is if your iPhone can be used, but you'll find it's kind of tricky to do on your iPhone because you need to actually have a, a stand. So a little tiny tripod that would hold your iPhone in place to be able to make sure that you get good audio and video, but it is something you can use if your computer is not current and up to date. And worst case scenario, you can go buy a Chromebook because those are all made for the uh, internet and you're going to already have your video camera and your internet software all set up perfectly. And actually, since you mentioned Chromebook, the only challenge is we're not going to be able to go into a store to buy one. So, we may have to, you know, if they do this ahead of time, even further so that if they have to buy one on Amazon, if Amazon sells them, uh, they can do it that way. But otherwise, I think it's important to, you know, or borrow somebody's, borrow somebody else's computer, you know, whatever you need to do, make sure you got that Wi-Fi speed. That is a great point. And your smartphone does work. It's just that you need to keep it. It needs to stay still. I've, I've done some video calls where someone was holding it with their hand and they ended up covering the microphone. And so it obviously led to a really poor presentation. And I would in general recommend using a computer because you're going to want to, to grab the screen. It's called share screen and show a presentation on from your computer. It's very difficult to do that on an iPhone. So I highly recommend using a computer and trying to find a way to make that work. And, and actually that's a good point. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, but uh, about showing uh, mock-ups of your products versus showing the products themselves. So 
So we're going to get at, into that in a little bit. Yes. So another thing that is really is important is looking at the room where you're going to be filming. And Joe and I were have, and Joe has a crazy sense of humor and we're always laughing about jokes. And we were sharing some videos back and forth about worst case scenarios and what could go wrong. And, uh, you know, people can walk in and out of the room and you just don't realize that you probably should have told the, the other people in your family, like your spouse, your um, children, the dog, the neighbor, the noise in the rooms around you or the noise in the rooms inside can be distracting. And so you're going to want to tell everyone in your house what time your presentation is, remind them to be quiet, maybe put a little note on the door, maybe lock the door so your kids can't come in <laughs> and make some noise because that stuff will be surprising. But the dryer will be running while you're doing some presentation and suddenly you feel so humiliated because you can't, you can't get up from your 10 minute presentation to go turn it off. So you got to think through those little tiny pieces. And on top of that, you can get the funniest things happening where you maybe have a messy background behind you and you have your notes and maybe some Kleenex behind you in, your, uh, in the video screen and people will completely be distracted by whatever is behind you. And you, if you are watching this on YouTube, then you'll see that Joe has a Range Me ECRM banner, which if you are worst case scenario, you should go buy one of those and it just blocks out everything. So you don't have to worry about a complicated decor and making yourself look sophisticated. But in, if you look at my screen, I've, I've got some very, very simple uh, decorations in the back, things that are not distracting from my face, but that add a little bit of color and pop. But really simplicity is the point because you don't want to distract people or accidentally have something embarrassing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you should be the main focus of the presentation, not your room. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you don't think about it until you do a practice run because you know something will be slightly out of frame like maybe the if you're in a in a room and the bedroom is to the left or the right, you might accidentally have that in frame, so you definitely need to do a test run, make sure the angle and everything is all set up good. Uh, which brings us to another issue which is lighting and we don't think about these things in a regular ECRM meeting because we are in a well-lit hotel uh, lobby or, or room, but you want to be sure that you have warm lighting, so nothing harsh, and it's great to get natural lighting if you have a window nearby, but you don't want to be in direct sunlight or you will look shadowy and sort of suspicious. Uh, it has this weird effect if you're in shadow or if you're in too bright of a light. So test out the lamps in your house and the lighting and move some lamps closer to you if in the area where your office is, is a little bit dark. Well, a good example is just look at my lighting, which is not that good uh, because I don't have the equipment for it. I'm using like a LED lamp that I have and I got the sun over here. And now if you look at Emily's lighting, it's much better. Thank you. Well, I, I moved specifically my desk for this conversation closer to natural light so that I have natural light on different areas. And if you are watching this, you can see I also have a ring light, which you can buy these on Amazon. And there's a lot of Instagram makeup tutorial videos where people get a little bit crazy with these lights. But what they do is they sort of illuminate your whole face so that you don't have a shadow. You don't have to buy those. They're not essential, but you can look on YouTube to see which ones are best on Amazon. But if you do end up doing a ton of these types of videos, it's helpful because it puts a light in front of your screen so that your face is not you know, in a weird shadow. I'm trying to see if you move it away, you can see that suddenly the light is obviously coming from the left of me and there's a shadow on the right. And just based on, on movie experiences and TV, we all know that shadowy characters have a negative connotation. So be well lit in your face and that way it looks like you're friendly and will optimize your presentation skills. You know, and the time of day too, because normally, uh, like earlier in the day when I was doing these, I had the sunlight coming in from this side and I had my lamp over here. So it kind of balanced out. Now it's a little darker here and it's a little bit lighter here. But, uh, you know, for my purposes right now, this is fine. But, you know, when you're trying to sell your products, you want to make sure it's, it's optimized as much as possible. That's so completely true. And it's not until you get into that sales presentation where you suddenly notice all of these things going wrong. So again, testing it out is like crucial. Yep. The other thing that we can talk about is the video camera angle. 
you know, you, you don't want, you want to be close enough to the camera that people can see your face, especially because we'll show you in a minute, but you're going to want your focus to be on the presentation. So your video camera, the, the square that has your face will get super small. So you want to be close to the, the camera, but not so close that it's cutting off your entire head. A little bit in your forehead is okay. Um, but you just, you want to be the center of the screen and you want to be close to the camera so people can see your facial expressions. That's how you can communicate a lot of the enthusiasm that you have for your product. And let's see, oh my gosh, outfit. Outfit, outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Things can go wrong here because for one thing, I don't know if, if you're watching this video, you can see the pattern on the background of my, uh, the table behind me has a tablecloth with geometric patterns. And I picked this so that you can see that it looks, it's really hard to look at. It sort of gets blurred in the image. And so you don't want to wear stripes or crazy patterns. I would go for solid colors. And you want to be sure that if you have a darker background that you're wearing a light shirt. And if you're wearing a light shirt, you're going to have a dark background. And if you're watching the video, you'll see that Joe is wearing black on a white background and I'm wearing white on a black background. Not only that, I'm wearing my ECRM shirt. So. <laughs> We'd represent Joe. I got to wear them. You know what? I bought 10 new ones just before this whole pandemic happened. And now I can't, I have no reason to wear them. So I'm going <laughs> to, you know, wear them when I do these. Wear them every single day. You've got a perfect, like, you've got yep. a month's worth of clothes right there. You scare <laughs> shirts. <laughs> so and then, uh, you mentioned uh, camera angles. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's important too. Right. Okay. So you want to be sure that your eyesight is within three quarters of the screen. That's what's optimal for being able to have eye contact. And you want to be sure that your face is in the center of your camera. And oftentimes if you're using an iPhone, you don't even realize it, but the camera is actually to the left of the screen. And that's also true on a Mac. So you have to, you want to identify where is my computer screen, my little camera and make sure that I'm in the center of it. And it's, you do, some people will be calling in on a laptop. And the funny thing is, is if you have it on a laptop, oftentimes then you're looking down at the video camera, which means that the camera is looking up at your upper chin and you know, and you start to look a little bit heavier, you, they might miss, see the spots where you miss shaving if you're a gentleman. And so the best thing to do is to elevate that laptop, put some books underneath it. So that way that you're sort of square, you're looking, if you were in a meeting with a person face to face, you want to be eye level with the, that person. And so it's important to make sure that your screen is not, you're not looking down, the angle isn't looking up, or that it's not even too high. Some people have their computer set up where their camera is an attachment on top of their computer screen. And so it looks like it's dramatically looking down so that you can see into their lap almost and see their, see their pants. And so you want it, that's just, it doesn't look attractive. It's not the best angle for a person. And it also doesn't feel like you're talking eye to eye with someone. So intuitively, people like to talk eye to eye. So you want to just look like you are looking straight at the camera and it's sort of, it's okay to have it a little bit angled down or up, but you don't want it to be dramatic where you're getting a bad angle of your face. I agree. I have, in fact, I have my laptop on top of two shoe boxes. So that this way <laughs> it's like level with my eyes. Yeah. But, uh, but it, like you said, it makes sense. And, and you want to look at the camera because if you're not looking at the camera, then it looks like you're talking to them like this and you're not even paying attention. So very yep. important to know where your camera is in relation to everything. What, as you say that, it reminds me that I've seen people give presentations where when they're looking down, uh, they forget that the camera is not their presentation. So you'll be having your presentation live, but they might end up looking to the right the whole time. If they move, you'll have a zoom open as one window. So let me do this right now. I can move it to the right. So if I start staring at myself, which is a picture of me in this Zoom field, it's not in the same location as the camera, which happens to be center of the computer. And it looks, it looks like I'm talking off to the side and I don't even realize that I'm not giving you eye contact. And if I'm, my presentation's over here on the left and the Zoom is on the right, that I'm looking at my presentation and talking at it, but I'm, not miss, I'm missing the eyes of the people that are watching. And it's okay to look at your presentation. It's okay to look to the left or right. You don't have to be self-conscious and staring at the camera the entire time like a deer in the headlights. But you need to realize that when you're doing these video presentations, it's so very different than doing it in person. As a salesperson myself, when I do in-person meetings, 
it's my charisma that usually is the main communicator. It's my facial expressions. And I've brought presentation uh, flyers and papers printed to show to people, and they've never even looked at it at an ECRM presentation. What is different on these Zoom calls is that people will not be staring at your face. They really, to feel comfortable, they will want to look at a presentation of your product. So you need to be sure that you're giving eye contact, but that you're also drawing attention to the appropriate slides and kind of going back and forth. You will notice, it'll be very interesting, but people will actually look at your slides, which they really don't do very often in ECRM because they're looking at your eyes, your face because they can kind of look around the room. It's, a, it's just a very different environment in this digital platform. So you gotta go practice, practice where your eyes are going and practice your presentation on Zoom. Super important. I, that's a good point. And uh, before we get into the part about the product presentation, what about the desktop? Because I, I see a lot of people during Zoom presentations, you know, when they're switching from one thing to another, you can still see the desktop. What are, what are your recommendations? for cleaning it up or you know making sure nothing's on there that, that can be seen this is such a great question because talk about opportunities to get embarrassed most people don't even think about the fact that you're you often save images or files or pricing for different competitors or even your wire transformation information or even passwords on your desktop so that you can easily and quickly access access it and on zoom what you're going to do is click on a little square button with an up arrow and click to share your screen when it's time to take control and share your product and so i'm going to demonstrate that right now by clicking on zoom to share my desktop and what happens is you can see not only the presentation which is in a pdf i've exported uh, from PowerPoint and Keynote into this presentation so that I could be sure that it's a low, res it's easy to open. But on the right hand side, you can see other photos and pictures. And so I literally left these things up here just to be able to illustrate it. There's a picture of Kat, who's a brand identity director with us, and me at a restaurant. You could, you just, your curiosity just is peaked. You want to know what's inside that picture. You start reading the names of all the different files. So if I had pricing from competitors on there, you would know that I'm dealing, who I'm dealing with. And that might be information you want to share with everyone on that phone call. So the number one piece of advice is to create a folder somewhere in your documents or in your hard drive that's not visible and just grab everything on your desktop and move it in there. So that way it's, it's completely hidden and you have a clean, you know, you have a clean slate and the only thing that they can see is the background that's up there. You also will want to close any of your browsers or additional things that automatically load. I typically listen to music when I'm working. So I have a Spotify file that's always open or you'll have your, in, your email open. And if you accidentally open up your email, people will be able to read your emails. And so you'll click on something and they'll again be able to see pricing or some email from your wife or husband. So you don't want that to be open. Also, every time an email comes in, it's going to ding. <laughs> very, very and not only really that, some emails will actually show you know, the, uh, the subject line, you know, too. So it's good just to get out of email altogether or any instant messaging apps you have, whether it's, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like, you know, Microsoft. I message or. Yeah. WhatsApp. Or mm -hmm. uh, what's that other one? Um, I forget the name. But anyway, any of those messaging applications, make sure they're shut down so that nothing pops up uh, that you don't want anybody else to see. Yes, and that's also true of Internet Explorer. Some people will have their presentation on a, on a website, and I really don't recommend that because what will happen is you might have additional tabs at the top of your Internet Explorer, and you're going to want to close out of all of them and ideally extract things from the Internet so it's actually hard drive on your computer so nothing gets slow in terms of loading up. And, yeah, Internet Explorer, different, different parts of your, your computer automatically save your most frequently visited website. So if you're visiting your children's school all the time or maybe Facebook, again, those things will open up. So you wanna do a test drive of your presentation, clean off your entire desktop. So I would, the only things I wanna keep up here if I was doing this presentation would be my presentation. Everything else is gonna get dragged and dropped into a different um, place. And that way the only thing I open up is my PDF and I get to share my screen and go and walk everyone slide by slide. Gotcha. So only open the thing, only put on the desktop the things that you want to use 
for the presentation and then just assume that everybody can see everything on your computer and then you'll be safe. <laughs> yes, yes. Excellent, good point. All right, so now we get into the actual presentation part and the product presentation. So you wanna talk a little bit about that and your recommendations? Yes, so it's really interesting because we do a lot of packaging design and, and product development and this is a great example. Um, if you are typically doing an in-person ECRM meeting, you have your product on display, and then when the person who is your buyer comes in, they can see everything. So you can maybe point to something, grab it, and give it to your buyer, and then suddenly they are going to see and experience your product. But in this kind of an environment, you do not want to be taking your product and bringing it up to the screen. It's going to have a weird, unattractive impact. The lighting will not be good. Um, you're going to be very distracted holding product and showing product. So you need to change your sales process. The main way that you can do that is to plan on having a beautiful presentation and relying on that to show and demonstrate your product in the optimum light. So you want to not only make a, a PDF, a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation and convert it into a PDF so that it's not a slow file. It's very easy to read. Everything's stuck in place. You also want to be sure that you have really beautiful product photos. So whether that is professionally done pictures of your product or 3D mock-ups, uh, high resolution digital mock-ups, because you just don't want people to have to rely on you showing it on a computer screen. And here I'm going to show you just examples of how you can have a mock-up, which would really change your presentation on a clean background. You get like a higher impact presentation than if you are, you know, bringing it up to the camera and you don't want these to look bad. So our company, if anyone wants help with those things and doesn't have great photos, you can contact us. We, we do that as a service. That looks really sharp. I mean, you could, uh, you could tell the difference where if you just held that up to the screen, you know, because the lighting is going to be off and everything and, and the perspective might be off, but there is, it's a very good example of what we're looking at now of just how crisp and clean it'll look if you build a presentation with your product images. Yes, and you don't want those photos taken with an iPhone or that's, I think, one of the things that I've seen a lot of emerging brands have trouble understanding is that the more professional your presentation to really make things look clean and crisp and well and brought together, that's how you show that you're ready to play with the big retailers of the world. And so it's very important that these presentations have professional photography or professional 3D mockups in the, in the presentation. So some people, I'm sure some of these suppliers already have um, professionally done photos. Maybe they're using them for their social media, their website, their range me page. Uh, but for those who don't have them, right, and they don't have time, how can they get something like this put together? If uh, you know, so they can call you, you know, get in touch with you. And that's one way. And then if they're in a pinch, let's say they're doing this Monday or mm -hmm. Monday afternoon or Tuesday. I think that, so if you have someone, hopefully people have a graphic designer that they know they can call quickly. That's the number one thing is you, you do need to have um, somebody with graphic design capabilities to do that. But if you, what I would do is go through your images and try to pick the best ones. You want a clean white background. You're going to want to have great lighting for your, for your product. You're, you'll want a front and back image or a picture of the product in its cell display. So if it's in a, if it's going to be sold in a tray or a point of purchase display, you're going to want to put those things into those slides and you don't want to add too much text. People in these types of presentations will be listening to you for the content. You want to have a few bullet points. You want to be really clear with the title of the, pro of the page, but really let images be the main focus. And so pick clean pictures and put a few of them on each page. And what I like about this particular setup is that you have the products and you have the information on the same page so that this way they don't have to go bouncing back and forth Let's say, you know, this is their line of products. They can just keep it up and walk through it. So yes. it, it's a lot easier. It's a lot simpler. And, you know, when you have 10 minutes, it's really going to be like seven or eight minutes because we're going to leave some time for Q&A. 
Um, so you really want to make sure you don't have to mess around too much. You have a couple of things, maybe one or two slides that will really give them the essentials that they would need. Yes. Yes. And I, as a salesperson have done this before myself, but a lot of, a lot of the people who are great at sales are really good at articulating selling points of their product, but they may not be experts at graphic design or PowerPoint presentations. And another thing I've seen that's been done in a, in a funny way is where a company has a sales rep or a VP of sales who maybe isn't in office and they've designed the sales presentation and they've picked fonts and colors and images that they find funny or unique, but they, they don't have a brand consistent story. And in some cases, it doesn't really matter you know, when you're in person, but when the main focus is going to be this presentation, it is important that the fonts are brand consistent, that things are laid out in a beautiful and attractive, non-confusing way. And so I would also suggest that you reach out to your graphic design team, create the sales presentation, whatever you have, make sure someone does a one over on it to make sure that the branding is beautiful. And you know, I think this is a good example of how you want, you want the fonts to be on every single page consistent with the logo so that you're telling a story about your brand. And so these are examples of different presentations that, you know, if, if you have the top presentation, it, it's consistent on every single page all the way through with whatever your branding is. And any graphic designer on your team should be able to do that. So send the information to them, let them do a one over. If you don't have a branded template, Pearl Resourcing also offers that. So you can reach out to us and we can give you a quick turnaround time of, you know, a, a few days, depending, we can do some of them faster because I know some people are in a really super rush, but you should definitely make sure that the branding on all the pages looks clean and that someone else gets an eye at it to make sure you, you look professional. Gotcha. And, and this really, you know, these slides really drive home the difference between in-person meeting and a digital meeting because like you said in person you have the emotions you have the you know the facial expressions you have all the nonverbal things their enthusiasm their excitement the gesturing and all that that you're not it's not going to have the same impact when you're on a digital screen however the images like the ones that you showed before and the ones that you're showing now do have a big impact when you're in this kind of environment. So I think it is really important when you can to leverage this type of, of mock-ups. Yeah, I've seen tremendous a tremendous impact and I, I can't disclose the name of one of the clients that we recently worked with, but they were using you know a local, a local graphic designer who had done a great job to date with doing their presentations and mock-ups, but they were suddenly trying to up level and go to ECRM and get into big box stores. They wanted to court CVS. They wanted to court um, uh, Kroger. And so they knew they were going to be meeting with them. So they hired us to do some presentations and we did end cap mock-ups with 3d graphics that showed what it would look like in the beauty industry, the beauty category to be able to have your products like that. The professionalism was so dramatically different and their performance. So they went to one ECRM where they didn't feel that it was like the right fit for them. They called me and asked why. And I said, it's because your sales materials did not look, you didn't look like you're ready to play with the big boys. It didn't look like you knew the professionalism that would be required of you. And when they came back a second time with different sales materials, they are right now in talks with CBS and having an entire end cap. Mm -hmm. So the presentation really sold and drove it home because it gave vision to these buyers who have a million people soliciting them to try to get their product in stores, they need to see instantly, oh my gosh, this would look appropriate in my store. These guys are here to play. This is a professional company. So this presentation stuff, you should get other people on your team to help you. Don't rely on doing it yourself as a sales rep. It works when you're in person because you can use your charisma, but in a digital platform, you really need great graphics and branding. Excellent. Well, uh are there any other, I think we covered the gamut of the presentation side of it. And I think just, you know, kind of the wrap up, you know, just also, you know, when you're doing these meetings, one, keep in mind the limited time. So you have, you know, about seven minutes of meeting and three minutes of Q&A or two minutes, depending on what you want. So you want to, you know, the, a few key points to focus on. So, you know, main thing, your point of differentiation. Uh, also, you want to focus on the visuals, 
You want to focus, you know, the essential, all the essentials that they're going to need. There's not going to be time for chit chat and nobody's going to want chit chat. They're, you know, they're going to want to see all these different uh, products. Plus you're going to be, you know, one of several up to 10 suppliers presenting. So that's why the point of differentiation is so important. So uh, Emily, what other recommendations do you have for that part of it? Well, I think because as you said, it's a short presentation and you're really trying to get clear on the point of difference. You want to prove how successful your concept is. You want to prove that there's existing customers out there. So that's, it, that's not a lot of time. You got to get mm -hmm. straight to the point. But the advantage of uh, what I would really recommend is having, if you have a Range Me account, to be sure to have that link at the bottom and tell them that you're there on Range Me because that's the number one way that they can go and find additional information quickly. Actually, so that's a good point. Uh, and you don't know this yet because we just decided to do this yesterday, but actually it will be tied in with Range Me. So uh, yes, the buyers will have the opportunity to check out the Range Me profile. So there will be some you know, advance notice and this way, you know, they have their stuff on there, so. Oh, that is that is so great. And that sort of bridges the gap because it's, it's again, I've, I've talked to a couple of most consumers that I, or most brands that I know that go to ECRM always find massive relationships. And I would say that's the majority. It's like 95%, 90%. There's maybe 10% that I've talked to and they've asked me the question, hey, why didn't I do well here? And every time when I've gone to look at their their presentation on Range Me or their their mock-ups and their sales sheets, it's because there's a lack of, of professionalism to their presentation. And so it's important that your branded products look great. The images need to be great on Range Me and they need to match the ones that are on your presentation because that will just that will show a unified front. It really shows a strong brand message. And that is what converts is people are like, wow, this is a solid brand. People can recognize. So that's really important to just go through your range real quick, have someone on your team, take a glance, make sure that all that looks really clean and tight and um, be sure to share that you're on range me during your presentation. Excellent. Well, thank you a lot for all of this great information. And uh, again, if uh, any suppliers have any questions or you want to reach out to Emily, uh, your email, her email is emily at pearlresourcing.net, net. right? Dot net. So Pearl. emily at pearlresourcing.net. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I then, wish you guys great luck. You guys are going to knock it out of the park, and I can't wait to hear some success stories. I'm sure there are going to be plenty. Thank you very much again. Thanks, Joe.